All right. Hope everyone's had a good weekend. Nice and nice and fun one on our end. Yeah, we had a good weekend. Definitely exciting. We went to back-to-back uh, -back Hawks games um, against the Suns and then against the Wizards. Won both games. Last night's game went into overtime. My throat and head still kind of hurt. <laughs> so it was a big time. Yeah, we had we had a lot of fun in Atlanta, though. Uh, pretty exciting to see uh, uh, the Hawks win back-to-back. -back. And exciting to see Steph Curry put up 60 points. That's definitely something you do not see every day. So that was great. <laughs> Too much whiskey? No. No, I didn't have any. did not have any booze. No alcohol for me. It's rare that I drink alcohol. Sometimes I'll... If I do en enjoy some, it's usually like a glass or something. It's nothing too extreme. I try to keep it easy when it comes to... Have I been to, to Buckhead? Uh, not really. <laughs> Not really. We spend most of our time in, in North North Atlanta. Like up in the B Buford area. Um, maybe not that far. You're in Buford? Yeah, we went up to uh Buford for uh we went to the Mall of Georgia for uh, for a minute and then went back down and went to the World of Coke and uh went over back over to the uh State Farm Arena. We saw some of the wildest stuff. There's there's some interesting stuff uh, in Atlanta. Atlanta's a fun city. I, I I'm a country boy. I, I like where I like my space. <laughs> I like the woods. Like I see the benefits. Like I've lived both in a city and out in the the woods, and I definitely prefer living out here. But yeah, city life is definitely uh fun for sure. I could probably do both. Like, if I wanted to move to the city, I could, but I like it out here. <laughs> Life prep is back only for this week because I wasn't here Friday afternoon. So we're still going to keep doing it Friday afternoon or try to, but uh, we'll, we're doing it tonight, uh, this go around since I wasn't uh, here Friday. But, but look to keep doing it for Friday. Um, it is recorded, so if you miss it, it is what it is. We we don't change anything up. Uh, it's just you get the information a lot earlier, which is nice. Uh, it also frees up my my weekend because I usually spend about four hours uh, prepping over the weekend, and it's nice to have that time back. <laughs> so instead, I use that time on Friday to to get ready for the next week. So uh, it's, life's about balance sometimes, and and I plus I've been doing Sunday night prep for what, two years now, and that's a lot of time that I could then spend time with going to family events and, and birthdays and all that kind of good stuff, so I've made a lot of sacrifices doing it on Sunday, so uh, it's now on Friday for the most part. Uh, all right, well, let's just go ahead and dive into it. As always, if you have any ticker requests, feel free to shout them out. We'll be happy to uh, go over anything that you want us to, to go over. Uh, and yeah, here we go. All right, so last week we had a lot going on. <laughs> we had mega cap earnings, we had the Fed, we had the FOMC meeting. Uh, throw in a little bit of the regional bank concern just uh popping back in there. So, yeah, there was nothing to miss last week. I mean, there was, there was just a lot. Uh, Meta knocked it out of the park. Uh, Amazon did okay. Uh, Apple, eh, we knew, we kind of expected Apple to be me. Uh, Microsoft did good. I mean, every everything has just gone swimmingly well for the Magnificent Seven and for big tech for the most part. And then you had the Fed come in, and they didn't raise rates. They didn't cut rates. We're kind of expecting that. And Powell shut down the entire March rate cut which we kind of got the gist of that that wasn't going to be 
you know, a thing anyway. They've been saying that, you know, we, we need to be relying on the data that's coming in. Uh, they're going to keep rates higher for longer, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, he kind of got the market's hopes up last time he came on, and the market just kind of went on a frenzy. Like, yeah, we're going to have like 125 basis points of rate cuts this year, and there's going to be six rate cuts all together, and here we go, starting in March. And that's just totally not the case. Powell just kind of shut that down. Uh, so now the market's like, okay, well, earnings, hooray, AI, hooray. Everything's going great. Uh, as far as earnings goes, uh, speaking of earnings, we uh, got a bunch of it to this week. Uh, not so much big tech wise. We got more of the uh, interesting aspects of the market. You got Caterpillar, you got Lily and Ford, you got, I don't know, you got Disney and PayPal in there and Dexcom. So some interesting ones. Nothing majorly market moving. Um, yeah, so I think we're kind of to the point where, like, okay, we can kind of start to look forward to the seasonality things and, and you know, where, where things may want to uh, take us. Maybe we get some uh, cool down here. By cool down, if we look at the market, I mean, this market's just been on an absolute tear. We're even at plus three ATR on the weekly time frame. So the market is definitely getting to that spot where things are super duper not super duper extended, but just extended by several different metrics. Uh, and we're starting to see, you know, when it, when it, things get up to these levels, this is when you want to be a little bit more on the defensive end. This is why I haven't been putting on too many swing trades. We've taken on a, a lot more swing trades lately, and then I haven't introduced any new ones just because... I know that this is where the market is at, and now's the time to be a little bit more on the cautious side. Uh, just because the market is overextended or overbought isn't necessarily a signal that, okay, we're going to turn around and get sold off, and you know then we can go from there. That's not necessarily how it works, but what you want to be here is maybe just a little bit more situationally aware of things. So when if you do put on new positions... What I advise at this point is to at least lower your position size. So if your normal contract size lot is about 10, eh, cut that down to maybe like half, do five, or you know, do a third and go three, however you want to see fit. Because if we do get a, a pullback and a rug pull, it could be come a little aggressive you know maybe some of the frothiness is done and buyers are just exhausted at this point and there needs to be a little bit of a reset and rebalancing uh so to speak and and as we get into the more seasonality of things it, it does bring in a different new headwind uh so to speak so this is starting to get into a little bit more of the weaker side of things as far as seasonality goes and we just want to be mindful of that too as we get extended from the key moving averages as we are up here at about three atr and you know last time we got up to three atr we had a nice little pullback prior time we got up to plus three atr we had a even more pullback on this is based on the weekly too uh you can probably look at it on the the daily chart too and see where things have have called cooled off a little bit so uh as far as you know any kind of major catalyst we've already got the majority of the the big tech earnings out of the way we've got powell out of the way and he kind of crushed everyone's hopes and dreams for rate cuts and everything like that so maybe we get some readjustment out of that but as it says the bulls are still very well much so in control uh day trading right now makes a little bit more sense to me than swings uh which again which i haven't been adding too much at the end of the week i still want to look for swings and i still want to possibly get into some swings but it's going to be on reduced sizing and i want things to move a little bit quicker so i'm looking for quick hits um something that doesn't take possibly two weeks to to run granted it's been nice where anyway the moves that we get happen within a week or so which has been nice but i'm going to start looking for quick moves uh regardless 
day trades make a lot more sense. Uh, and then if you are long swinging anything like that and you're in positive, now's the time where you start to go, okay, maybe I want to move my stops up just a little bit higher. I want to protect my bottom line here and start to look for opportunities to buy on possible dips. You know, if, if we do get a move down, where's my good dip buy? And then also where do I want to uh, have, uh, you know, where, where do I want to adjust my stop levels? You know, everyone's uh, long-term accounts should be looking pretty good. You know, your long-term account, remember you want to have two separate accounts. You want your, or three, however many you really want. You know, you want your short-term trading account and you want your long-term trading account. Make sure you protect your long-term also. Uh, and then for your short-term, you know, do what you need to do there. But everyone's long-term accounts should be looking pretty good. We're at new lifetime highs. This market didn't really care. It, it really just brushed off the whole entire Powell situation really quick with with earnings so next week the economic calendar is pretty slim pickings nothing too crazy going on we got some economic data tomorrow with the s p uh, composite data and the ism stuff uh we got a few fed speakers here and there uh but other than that nothing too crazy you got jobless claims which is a weekly report going on so other than that it's kind of quiet as far as the economic calendar goes which which is nice uh considering last week it was just every single day was some sort of jobs data so uh yeah how fun uh so yeah cool beans that's pretty much the uh extent of you know where we are at as far as the the broader market and now we just kind of want to look around for for some interesting clues here the es looks great but so does the nasdaq nasdaq looks even greater uh still at plus three atr on the weekly things are a little bit extended now's the time to be a little bit more on the uh cautious side remember be a good a defensive player as well as an offensive player uh just be well rounded but as the things sit right now now i do want to point out that there is a little bit of negative divergence here uh on both the nasdaq and the es mainly so on the uh, one hour time frame uh so what i'm looking at here is you know even though we've made uh, a little bit of a higher high here this is making a lower high so this is a negative divergence in itself uh, and you can also kind of confirm that here on the daily time frame on rsi you got a higher high and look there you got a lower lower high on the rsi so definitely want to pay attention to that that is definitely another little bit of a hey knock 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 what's going on pay attention to me uh, maybe the market's getting a little bit sneaky, uh, in my opinion. Um, I don't want to be like overly bearish because the overall market is just absolutely on a on a tear right now. It's just a slow grind. Uh, no matter what, I mean, if you take a look at the six J, which is the Jap the the yen, uh, and you can you say, okay, well, how's the carryover trade? Where you know you borrow from the yen to buy dollars, you then take that uh to to buy stock that looks pretty good right and then i take those profits and then pay off the interest rate that i had at four percent with the yen everything's looking pretty good here yen looks like it wants to go lower uh that definitely bodes well uh the dollar here uh looks pretty interesting i would say that i want to pay attention to a little bit of this was it on the daily time frame Yes, it's the daily time frame. You have a little bit of this inverse head and shoulder on the dollar. It doesn't mean much until we break the neckline and push higher. Uh, so if we start to break above 104, there is a possible shot here that the dollar moves higher. A stronger dollar does create a headwind uh, for the market and could create overall pressures. So you can see here it, it had a really impressive day on Friday. And, I, you know, I thought that was pretty interesting that the dollar was moving higher and the yields had a pretty good field day on Friday and the market just uh, moved higher with it. So that's odd. Um, and if we look at the bonds, yeah, the bonds had a little bit of a, a, a troublesome time on Friday too. bonds move lower. So it was just this weird aspect to me on, on Friday. It was it was very <laughs> to me I, I couldn't quite wrap my head around it but uh you know the market's going to do what it's going to do anyway uh but ideally the bonds they look 
pretty eh, you know they're they're okay they, they could be better um you don't want to see it uh break down below 121 and then of course if you look at the the vix here uh whether you're looking at uh vix futures or just the vix in general it has this really pretty uh squeeze here which is still kind of coiling i mean you can see here on price action that um, this is starting to i i just call it it's, it's being sneaky it's just kind of being quiet it's just slowly moving higher um if this happens to break above 15 about that 15 mark then i would uh you definitely want to be careful here um if it breaks above 15 maybe then we start to look more aggressively on the short side of things and if that squeeze wants to fire along then if you look at the volatility of volatility <laughs> uh you definitely want to have some sort of an alert here uh, above this 90 91 we'll call it 91 if you get a breakout above 91 on the the vix yeah then then we're starting to look more more putty and by putty we can just take the market to a reversion of the mean and once we get a pullback say to at least i mean even a reversion to the daily mean is a pullback to support down here at about the 4800 level which eh, that would give you a nice little drop about 200 es points so i mean we hit 5000 uh, just shy of 5,000, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, if you're talking about a weekly reversion to the mean, you're talking about a deeper pullback here uh, to about the 4,700 marks, so a little bit lower. So it's like we would undercut. Uh, what is that? Yeah, about the 40. That would even put you down to about the daily 50 here. Uh, if we do have a deeper cut, uh, if things do want to, to get juicy there. Uh, if we look at the small craps, the small caps, uh, they've been doing, they've been holding up. It hasn't really broken up. It hasn't really broken high. It tried to break higher, uh, and you had this failed attempt here. It tried to get out of the box, put the bunny back in the box, and they listened to Nicolas Cage, and they put the bunny back in the box, and it was like, oh, no, they're going to throw the bunny out of the window, and Nicolas Cage got angry, and he beat the guy up again, and we got put back in the box. Uh, and now we're just kind of holding steady. And if we start to break down below the daily 50, I hope everyone appreciates that comparison to the Nicolas Cage movie. Uh, put the bunny back in the box. That's such terrible acting. Um, if you start to lose the daily 50... Uh, things get really ugly here for the IWM. <laughs> but I'm gonna, yeah. Stop it, Ace. <laughs> uh, if you do get a breakdown below the daily 50, things do get nasty. The IWM is definitely more sensitive to the rates and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, pay attention to the IWM. Uh, if it breaks down, uh, yeah, it could get a little ugly. I mean, you're talking about a move from 190, possibly all the way down to about the 185 where it retests the daily 200. You do have a daily squeeze here, which is pretty good. Um, you don't have any sell signal here on the daily. And I know the market got a little hairy. Um, let's see here if we get... <laughs> I'm afraid to look at this. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, <laughs> Ace is trying to throw me off my game and sending me DMs now. <laughs> if we break down below, uh, let's see, neutral trend on the hourly. You still you got an hourly squeeze. That's nice. Uh, I would be looking for uh, a new down arrow here on my indicator, and that would send me short uh, for the small caps. But for the most part, I mean, look what the small caps have done. Absolutely not crap. So in the long-term scheme of things, this is this is not exciting. All the excitement is in the SPY and, and the NASDAQ. So where are things really happening here? Well, break it down by sectors now. So we got we know where the overall market is. We're a little extended. Sure. Maybe we just take an approach of more day trades than swing trades. If you do swing trades, less exposure. 
Uh, the dollar has this inverse head and shoulders look to it. That's a little bit bearish. Uh, the bonds, they're holding up. I would like to see them. Uh, you, yeah, this is where you got that sell off on the bonds on Friday. If you start to break down 121, it could get a little bit nastier. Uh, the VIX is coiling very sneaky there. Uh, crude oil has eh, not, it's not doing much, you know, it's not too exciting here. It looked like it was going to do something, and then it just kind of like, eh, never mind, you know, I'm, I'm good, guys. I know we got the whole issue going on with the uh, the Middle East, um, but you know, until it breaks back above this area, 78, then I don't see any reason to, to fear inflation at all. Um, and if you look on the weekly chart, yeah, it's still, still not doing much of anything at all. It's still in this big glorified giant box. Uh, if we break down below 70, then everything's a short, uh, and so on. Um, MPC, uh, as far as like the individual names, since we are still holding on to that, uh, it's still holding up fine. And as long as it holds above 160, it's still a pretty solid trade here. We're, we're starting to get in a little bit of a pennant there and i'm still looking for 172 20 and 175 65 all together so that's my overall targets uh it had a lifetime high breakout on earnings she looks pretty darn good still uh we could have we can have our stops down here at about 160 that would be our uh, less aggressive stop, but if you want, you can have a aggressive stop down here at about the 163 mark, which is about the daily eight EMA. But for me, as long as it holds above 160, 159, 50, I, I think it's it's fine. So I'm uh, going to continue to hold MPC and let it ride. I don't have really, I don't have any concerns. I have my levels, and that's all she wrote for that. As far as sectors goes. XLB looks nice, but it's it's one of those things too. It's still in a it's, it's in the box. Uh, nothing to do much there. It's neutral trend on the daily and the weekly. There's some interesting names out there uh, within the XLB uh, energy. It's neutral, and you can see this on the weekly too. It's just it's just stuck. Um, so there's another sector that's just kind of chilling. Uh, industrials, uh, industrials look pretty good. New highs here on the industrials. Uh, communication sector, it puts the Joe Dirt in the hole. <laughs> May he probably wants to be put in the hole because he's weird like that. Yeah. Uh, so we have communication sector that's definitely going to be overextended thanks to Meta. Uh, meta earnings, so it's a little bit skewed here, a little bit tough to look at. Uh, XLF financials, these guys are looking pretty good. Uh, you did get a breakout on this box, which was nice, and we did take care of some Berkshire. Uh, JP Morgan was another good one, and I'm going to look at JP Morgan. This one's going to be on the list of names to watch this week, too. Uh, JP Morgan. Let's see if we can catch a break above this 176.31 mark again and ride this back up to about 180 is where I want to go with this. If financials want to perk up, Goldman's sack looks pretty good. Did Ace leave because he missed that one? Um, <laughs> uh, Goldman's, Goldman's sack looks pretty good. Needs to clear 390. Uh, clear 390, then your next spot's going to be about 396 and 400 looks pretty good Burt b continues to be on an absolute ripperoni uh we played this one hit my targets got out haven't looked at it since but uh now on this one yeah 392 that's pretty pretty dang impressive on this i would want to see a pullback before i get back in it um other than that yeah they, they look pretty good the only financial part that's having issues here is Regional banks, and you can thank NYCB for that New York Community Bank. I mean, it's just not having a good time off of earnings, dividend cut, uh, the uh, real estate issues going on. 
Um, yeah, it's just harder for regional banks right now. And that's still going to be uh, a concern as long as these rates continue to be an issue. And what's going to happen is these regional banks are going to be more and more stingent on loaning out money. Uh, so it's going to be harder for small businesses except, or trying to start a small business, uh, et cetera. They're, they're going to be very, very picky, and they're just not going to be as uh, freeloading as they have been before. Uh, XLP Consumer Staples. This one's looking pretty interesting. Uh, had a nice little break out of this box, maybe a little bit of a big-time bull flag here. Uh, you still got plenty of wiggle room up. Not the most exciting thing on the planet. Uh, I know we had Pepsi short uh, on this, but uh, we got stopped out, and thankfully so, because it just ran and ran and ran. I remember 168 was our stop. We got stopped out, and now she's pushing on up. I'm not going to be looking at this one for the rest of the week. I don't really care for it. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, things that I do want to pay attention to is shop. Yeah, shop. I want to revisit this one. Uh, we got stopped out. You do have earnings in two weeks. What was that on the 13th? Yeah, two weeks. 13th. We got stopped out on the break of the daily 21. It hit the daily 50. I mean, I'm glad we got out when we got out because this would have been a nasty hit. But guess what? It's right back to our spot here. So this is going to be a good one to be on your radar for both uh, day trades, maybe a short swing trade. I probably would like to take this on as a day trade since I got whacked on the swing and maybe just try to make up some, some money off of it. Uh, but if it does want to break out again, or try to, because you can see here it broke slightly higher. Here it had that little dip, then we came back in, and then we just fell apart here. So now I want to see if this can gather back up support. Uh, new fresh tank of gas. We're in a new daily squeeze. Trend looks good. Thrust looks good. Uh, so yeah, I don't really have too much to complain about. Let me see the hourly real quick. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, neutral trend. So we're at the end of a buy program here on the hourly. So it will be an interesting thing if this thing can can push on up. Uh, so yeah, definitely want to keep an eye on shop this week. Uh, Dollar General. Uh, we got tax season uh, going starting at least. Um, need to break out above one thirty nine. Uh, if you do get a breakout above 139, your first hit is going to be the daily 200 at about 150, and then you got a little bit of a gap fill here to about 155. Want to pay attention to that one? You got a nice daily squeeze. Trend is neutral, uh, not too bad. Uh, Walmart falls in that category. Boeing, Boeing. Uh, this one's interesting. This one is in a mini Darvis box here between 217 and about that 200 mark so we know boeing's had their issues with the max nines uh they've seemed to have resolved those issues they're still getting orders they're starting to deliver more planes to china uh, etc so this is a very news heavy stock and a lot of traders you either hate boeing or you love boeing there's no in between uh if we do happen to break out above 217 yeah look for a 17 point move up to about 232 uh 17 plus 30, yeah it's 32 uh up to the daily 50 that would give you the measured move between the bottom and the top of this that matches up pretty nicely but if we break down below 200 uh look out below that would send you down to about the 180 170 math uh level um so yeah, want to pay attention to Boeing uh might need a few more days to set up but we're going to watch it uh, this week, no doubt about that. Uh, Triple M. A mm, little bit of a bear flag here on the daily. Whoopsie. If we start to break down, look down below to 85 again. So why not? Uh, Triple M on the chopping block. If the market wants to go in a negative direction, definitely want to uh, pay attention to that for sure. Uh, let's keep going down my radar here. Uh, FedEx, I think uh, UPS has earnings, right? No, UPS has already had earnings. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay, so they're good. Elf. Elf beauty. All right, so if FedEx starts to lose this 240 mark, looks good for shorts also. Uh, let's see. So this is kind of what I'm looking at. See, if the since the market is like 
a little bit more extended and we got those negative divergences. We got that inverse head and shoulder pattern on the dollar. The VIX is looking kind of coily. Uh, nothing actionable just yet, but if we start to falter here, I want to have something on the radar for the downside just in case. Uh, and that'll be some of these things that are just hanging on by a little bit of a thread here. Uh, I don't want to really, I don't really want to short big tech. Um, uh, just because big tech, they can rally and, and keep on going. We'll talk about JP Morgan. Uh, if you really want a boring name, uh, Sharon Williams. Ah, Sharon Williams. Yeah, that's right. The painting company. How fascinating. How how boring can we get? Sharon Williams. Uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. Has a good daily squeeze. We got earnings out of the way. Uh, good for really good for common shares um they do have an options chain but it's kind of me there's nothing too exciting if you want to try options definitely check the open interest you don't want to get caught up in some weird contract that doesn't have anybody in the club with you you don't want that you don't want to be the only person at the bar you, you want plenty of friends around can i take a look at amdo yeah uh so sure and williams 314 gets you a nice little breakout uh, I would be looking at a target of about, let's see, to about 20 points. So that would take you up to about 330. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good too. That lines up 326 to 330. And then you got the lifetime highs at about 354. Not a bad one for some common shares. Uh, we also have Albert, 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 Albert. <laughs> if we want to break down here on Albert Marl. Uh, breakdown of 112 sends us uh, really low here. They do have a good, a better options chain at least. Um, just remember, pay attention to those uh, open interest and see if you want to uh, get into a short put position on this. Uh, yeah, the open interest could be better. Um, yeah, 112, if you break down below this 112 support, yeah, things can get really ugly really quick for Albemarle. I'm going to even have to go back further here on the weekly yeah about 93 94 Ugh. uh amd uh let me look at the overall semiconductor etf i mean semiconductors i mean they still look pretty damn good to me do 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 trend is extreme extreme on the weekly you had this weekly squeeze fire long that definitely helps tech a whole lot uh, you do have a little bit of a shift, momentum shift here on the TTM squeeze. And we also have, okay, we don't have a negative divergence on RSI, but we could get one if we make a new high. So RSI looks fine. Uh, if SMH ETF breaks above, what is that, 191.25, we'll say 191.25, then you're looking at new highs there at 196. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, and then, you know, then you can break things down. I don't see anything here. Let me put this to an hourly just to be safe. Um, that looks fine. You're in a buy program. No squeezes. Um, let me see. Uh, you got a four hour squeeze here. Let's check that out. Um, four hours, 90 days. Uh, da, da, da. yeah, you got a pre squeeze here on the SMH. Yeah, if semiconductors want to be good. You got a new shot here at lifetime highs on semis, so that could be interesting. Do do do. Okay, so let's go over to AMD. Let's go check out AMD because AMD has been on a rip roaring tear. If you are long AMD. Then, Brayden, did you miss it? I talked about MPC, but we'll go back to it. Um, if you are long AMD, this is one of those things. Raise your stops. <laughs> Look for a dip buy opportunity. Uh, it looks pretty good still. I don't really have too many complaints. I don't have much complaints, really, other than that it's super duper extended. Uh, especially on the weekly time frame, you're at like plus plus five atr and that is very 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 rare um started stealing your slippers that's funny <laughs> uh 
I'm glad my dog's not the only one. Uh, let's see, you had this nice little trend breakout on the daily. Uh, as long as you hold above the daily 50, that looks pretty good to me. This is the hourly, sorry. If you hold above the hourly 50, that looks pretty good. Let's go to a daily though, let's switch that over. It's the same picture here, as far as if you compare this with the SMH. All right, so if you break above 178.90, you're looking at new lifetime highs again. Why not? Uh, that'll be a nice little day trade. Um, if we start to lose the daily 21 down here at about 164, then that is a no-no. And then you could possibly retest this uh, prior lifetime high breakout at about 150. Uh, that would pull you back. I mean, that's not even pulling you back to like two ATR, which is still AMD is like stupid, silly, bullish. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. Um, I, you got this downward momentum on the squeeze. That's something to make note of. Maybe we pull into a new squeeze here on the daily. Uh, but that doesn't mean if this thing wants to pop back off. I mean, we could easily get a new. Uh, light blue bar there and that would just kind of negate all of that so there's that uh looks like the smh in general so amd looks good as a day trade if you're if you have long stock or you know you got stuff in your long term just raise your stops it looks great i mean <laughs> i mean what, what else can you do here uh any chance to take at roku no i haven't looked i haven't looked at roku yet but we'll definitely take a look at it um let's see i got a bunch of tags here so let me let me catch up let's go up to spwr solar sun power sorry solar's weird uh this chart is top left to bottom right if anything it's a it's a short to me um lifetime lows <laughs> uh maybe it's a buyout name yeah this is bearish trend extreme bearish on the weekly i don't have a new signal here on the daily and if anything you need to get back above this four dollar mark if you get above that that could open the door and the problem is you're gonna have everybody and their mother looking to get out so it's going to be a, a tough time for for sun power i don't i don't like this one at all if anything look to short <laughs> uh yeah is it like a possible short squeeze candidate? Maybe. I don't really know the short interest here. Uh, maybe it's a buyout name at some point. You got earnings coming up. Yeah. And you got you're trying to rebase here, but I mean this thing just keeps making new lows. So I I don't see I, it doesn't look fun to me. It looks like a headache, if anything. End phase. Same thing. Top left, bottom right, downtrend. Um, you came up to the daily 200, rejected off of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Starting to get in a new squeeze. If we break down below 100, yeah, let's send it back down. So I like in phase for a short play. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, let's see what happens when we break back down below 100. 99 if you want well 98 send it back down retest these guys at about the 85 mark and then you got the new lows at 73.50 yeah um and i got a new signal here that doesn't look too good yeah for me this even has to probably get back above the daily 200 i like it as a short i'm gonna write that down in phase and subtler names Solar names look kind of gross, mangoes. Was that what you were going for? <laughs> were you trying to short those guys? Just out of curiosity, let me check the hourly. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops, wrong button. I hate it when I click the damn auto arrange button. Like, just go down. It's got institutional presence. I don't have to look that one up. Probably, you know, if, if you're probably going to play something like that, I, I prefer shares on penny stocks, in my opinion. But that's just me. I mean, it's whatever floats your boat on it. Uh, let's see. Who else did we have? Uh, Elf earnings on Tuesday. Yeah. 
Elf Beauty. We went to Sephora. My, my wife had to get some some makeup. Sephora was freaking packed of women and men. It was bizarre. I was like, this many people go to Sephora? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I can only imagine if Sephora is packed, Elf is probably doing good. So is Ulta. <laughs> And yeah, Ulta looks good, too. You're in a daily squeeze and you're retracing back here. This could be a fun little dip-by opportunity for Ulta. Um, I'm going to clear out these white lines because, here, let's just clear the drawing set. And I want to redraw you. And where are you? Where are you? And I'm so sorry for... Wow, that's a big box. Eh, well, well, let's see. 497, 467. This 13-year-old... Girl going for over 10 step makeup. Yeah, for real. Um, Let's see. What does that put us on? Ooh, okay. Ooh, I like this breakout. If we can break out above 513 and push towards 523, that looks, that looks great. Nice daily squeeze. Ulta. Um, could be affected by elf beauty earnings. So we'll pay attention to that. Um, uh, but yeah, that looks good. Uh, yeah, you are at three ATR on the weekly. Yeah, I'm. I'm telling you, when I mean, this place was busy, and all like the makeup artists, they were doing people's makeup, and like, Matt, they have this thing. They walk around and they scan your head to match whatever color skin tone you have. Like there was this lady, she was holding this device up to this woman's head, and I was like. They're robots in here. My wife was like, they're not robots. And I'm like, yeah, they are robots. So she's scanning their head, and they're going to go do some weird robot thing. She's like, no, they're matching their uh, their skin tone. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they're they're matching their skin tone to so they can give them the right makeup and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, that is wild. And you can pay them right there, too. Skin, scan, bleep, boop, pay. There you go. You're out. What the heck is going on in Sephora? So, yeah, I guess they can do that, too, at all these other beauty supply stores. Um, yeah, it old makeup sells. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't wear any, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Only on the weekends. What? Um, okay, so there's the... Um, let's see. PayPal. PayPal is a question. PayPal. Oh, uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead. Uh, upstart. And then I'll take uh go back upstart and no, <laughs> I'm not I'm not touching upstart. Um, is upstart good for day trading? I mean, this thing was four hundred dollars. It's down to thirty two now. It was yeah, granted it was like twelve bucks at one time. I'm not touching it. I can't recommend anybody to touch it. Two dollars for you to touch it. One dollar for me to touch it. I think that's what the quote in the movie. Um, so upstart. <sighs> Ugh. Break below 31 is a short. You're still below the daily 200, so you're below the uh, bullish bearish equator here. Uh, if we do get a pop above the daily 50, a daily close above the daily 50, then you kind of open the door to retest the 35 daily 200. And just consider it that it's just a retest of the daily 200, and then most likely it's a uh, it's a poop. This thing is a high short interest name, high short. Uh, so you got to be very, very careful here. If you're playing any kind of pop, that's when you got to be careful. Because, I mean, look, pop, sell off, pop, sell off, sell off even further. You get a little bit of a run, sell it off. Wick, higher, sell it off. It's a, it's a very dangerous name. Uh, if you want to try to day trade it, my advice is if you want to try to day trade a certain name that you're not familiar with, watch it for like a week or two get used to how it moves and how the premiums move if you're doing options pay attention to see how those premiums move because sometimes you can watch these names and you're like i'm gonna get into a good little contract here and the options do diddly squat and they're just terrible options um, and especially if you get into upstart which has a high short and it has a average iv well over a hundred percent you got to be careful with iv crush and even look next week 171 percent that is insane for for options so you got to be very careful for options so i don't recommend upstart for 
beginners. Uh, I would I would watch it, but even still, even if I'm not a beginner and I'm more experienced, I'm probably looking at Upstart and going, mm, I'd rather play something else more more something that's on a trend, not something that's on this uh, very sideways range of motion. It's just stuck here and it hasn't done anything since 2022 and it had a high of 400. Anybody who bought here, 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 they're all trapped. They want to get out. They want to get out and move on with their money. They, If you get a pop, you're going to sell. If you get a pop, you're going to sell. So you got to be careful. Just be careful. I, I wouldn't recommend trading UPST. Uh, PayPal. Uh, sorry, MPC. So MPC, we're still hanging around in this one. If we... Still looking for targets of 172, 175. As long as it trades above 160, we're good. No worries here just yet. Um, if it does break down below the daily 8 DMA, then I'm a little bit concerned. But even still, as long as it holds above 160, 159.50, I'm okay with it. Um, so just letting it run. Um, we did hit the 100 mark per contract last week, which was nice. I'm still holding a good bit here so i'm just waiting for it to either hit targets or get stopped out so that's just the nature of the beast uh paypal okay now we can go on to paypal and then roku and then cvx and all that anybody else uh paypal paypal this thing was funny to me the the ceo was like oh, i got the most market idea on the face of the planet and what he released was just a you know, some payment method. <laughs> There's nothing to extreme. The market was like, okay. <laughs> Target. Yeah, we'll get into Target. Uh, yeah, so PayPal. Man, this one. Let me clear out some of these lines here. You know, I want to remove all drawings. Clear. I think what's interesting here is we got new weekly buy signals, which we haven't had in... Quite some time. <laughs> I have to look way back to find some buy signals. We've been in the sell-off since October, and we haven't reversed since. So we do got this nice little base here. You're getting this nice condensing move here on the key moving averages. A lot of partying going on here uh, with the moving averages. You do have earnings this week. So that is going to be the key thing here. How is earnings going to be? What is their guidance going to be? I'll have to do some digging to see where things are at. Yeah, earnings Wednesday after the bell. Um, if you do get a nice little earnings report, that could be a good trend change from this bearish move here that we've had from 300 all the way down. You've got a nice base working here. Granted, you're still going to have that issue where everybody and their mother is looking to get out and so forth. So there, it's not going to be a fun long-term hold if that's what you're doing for a fun term. Fun. It's not going to be a fun long-term hold. It's going to be some ups and downs and some headaches for sure as the company kind of restructures and get things together and we turn a new leaf. But as far as the technical analysis of things i mean this is uh this is a big moment here for paypal and you got earnings coming on i think it's going to continue to kind of diddle daddle here until the earnings report after the earnings report we'll see if it wants to start to turn a new leaf or it's if it's going to be uh a new move to the downside and it kind of reminds me too of like sofi i mean sofi just reported their first ever quarterly profit and they were like, yay. Oh. So we, we at least need to get earnings out of the way and then kind of figure out where where key investors are, are kind of feeling here. But yeah, so far that was kind of an embarrassing moment there for them. So you got this tight action here. Wait till earnings. I'm not even going to play this for earnings. It's just too bleh. And I just thought it was funny that CEO came out. We got some innovative thing here. And it wasn't all that innovative. Uh, CVX. Not PayPal CVX, but CVX. CVX. Yeah. I, Chevron, it's got... They got earnings out of the way, which was nice. But if I'm looking at oil names, I like MPC 
if you compare MPC to CVX and PSX, these two look a lot better than Chevron. So if I'm looking for a market leader and am I looking at Chevron or am I looking at Marathon or, or Phillips 66, this one, you have a nice little base here that it built upon around that 140 mark. And now we're just seeing if we can get out of the box here. So how do we get out of this box? We got to break out. So first step here is get above the daily 200. That is key one. If we can get above the 200, then sure, we can, we can put our hats back on right and look for more upside. But as it sits, trend is neutral. This is at the 50 line. This is very, this is very neutral. Um, and I don't have a new arrow here on the daily uh weekly trend is still down uh so yeah it, it just to ask you your question if if cvx to you looks good what looks better and in my opinion mpc looks better uh but if you do get a little breakout above 155 156 hooray nice dividend a dollar 63 this go around so that's good nice dividend name um so yeah that's my thoughts on mpc uh, excuse me cvx um bah, bah. and then of course if you break down below 140 139 uh look out below look out below for sure i'll probably be getting out yeah in phase does have earnings yeah don't they they do have earnings when's their earnings date <sighs> tuesday after the close good shout so yeah even still could be a good day trade short for like tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow will probably be the only time i look at it um to see if it breaks down below 98 and then we'll have to wait till after earnings um okay let me see who else do we got do, do, do. let me catch up here snow smci dude smci tarjay uh oh my headphones died target Target looks pretty good. Daily squeeze. Did break out here. Good shot, booze. Bose, booze, booze. Yeah, I like that. I like this breakout. So, where does that leave us? 136 to 144. That's 2018 points, 18 points, give or take. Eight points? Wow. Math. Um, do, 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 do. Let's go from here to here okay so 150 to 154 okay i like that that would be a quick hit we do have a dividend paying out soon and remember target's not as juicy as walmart but nonetheless it looks pretty good my wife's boyfriend gave me his credit card should i take out 10k and start trading uh <laughs> I, I do not condone criminal activity, sir. <laughs> oh, Lord. And this is recorded, too, so that's fun. Um, yeah, Target. Uh, look for a continuation move to 150. Simple as that. If you break down below 136, look for a move back down to the daily 200. Squeeze looks good. Um, let me make sure if there's, there's any other daily... Or excuse me, any other squeeze. You got a four hour, but whatever. Um, you can just line that up with the daily. Yeah, 150. 150 looks good there. Nice shout. Um, booze, I'll write that one down too so I can keep an eye on it. Man, we got plenty of names this week. Shouldn't be uh, shy of trying to find something. IWM Longs? Nah. Uh, hold on. Let me make sure. I got to catch up here. Let me see. Where am I at? So we did Elf. We just did Target. We got two chats going on. So booze like moose. See, I knew that. Make sure. I'm trying to follow both of these chats because we got people typing in the uh, options chat room. So I'm making sure I'm following along with everybody. All right. So there's that. Um. Okay, so I think we're good. Intel and Qualcomm. Just looked at Elf and Target. SMCI is next, it looks like. 
SMCI. <laughs> uh, just wave at it. You know, just wave. Uh, if you have long stock, raise your stops. I mean, if you're green on this, there should be absolutely no reason at all why you'd go red. Um, if you're looking to get into something like SMCI, you have to wait for a deeper pullback. Uh, whether that's a pullback to 500, where we retest this key level here, or if it's a deeper pullback to the daily mean all the way down at about 450, uh, which is right here. So SMCI, I do not want to buy here. This is how you get a skewed risk to reward ratio. This is how you get your feelings hurt and you cry about it and you can't sleep. So I'm waiting for a pullback here on SMCI. If you played the breakout of what this 350 level off of earnings i mean congrats i mean home run grand slam you nailed it out of the park please raise your stops do what you have to do to protect your wins uh sell partial do what you need to do or just simply throw your stops at this point there should be absolutely zero 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 reason why you are not taking profit on something like this um at the same time i do not want to short something like this this is you know just as we don't try to catch a falling knife uh, we don't try to stop rocket ships from entering space. So uh, at this point, we, we have to wait and see what happens. Is If it cools down back down to 500 and we stabilize right here, that would be great. Um, and then we can look for uh, possibly a new squeeze. Uh, the weekly squeeze still looks good. Um, yeah, you, you might have a little bit of a negative divergence here on my indicator, but... Um, you're looking pretty good here, though. RSI looks great. I mean, it's way overbought, but you don't have a divergence. I can't buy it up here. If anything, I'm looking to take profits, raise stops, and do what I need to do to protect. But I'm not. I'm not looking to buy. I'm not looking to short here either. Great stock. I mean, absolutely beast, beast of a of a name. I mean, this thing was trading at fifty bucks not too long ago. <laughs> Ah, amazing snow everything every time i hear snow i think of john snow and game of thrones yeah break a beautiful breakout move Ugh, i even have this level marked down at 211.65 and i miss this what was i doing friday not paying attention to snow god bless america um yeah nice breakout Two two nineteen. that would have been that would have been it wouldn't it 196 200 man i'm angry that i didn't get a piece of this um 220 225 you could have a follow through move here within the next couple of days man i'm salty that i didn't catch that move um okay got earnings not for a while so that's good yeah, continuation move would put you to about 226, and then you got a little bit more of overhead around the 245, 250 mark. If you get a pullback here, see if this 211 breakout level holds. If it does, great. Then we can go back up. Uh, if not, you're back in the box, and it's choppy again. So that's a good one for Snow. Nice shout. Dum, ba, 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 da, ba, dum. The Becky ETF? What is the Becky ETF? Like, oh my gosh, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. Boost like this. Disney. Yeah, let's take a look at Disney. Oof, I gotta hit it. I'm gonna have to wrap this up soon. Disney looks good. Nice and bullish. Earnings this week. Pay attention to that. We already know Netflix had great subscriber growth. And, I mean, they're looking great. So how well or has that eaten up into Disney's subscriber count? That's the big question here uh, for Disney. If we – let me clear out some of these. Um, it has a nice little breakout. So I want to see a continuation move here above this 97 98 mark if you get above 98 then yeah i'm gonna look for 100 as my magnet i'm gonna write this one down too it does have earnings this week 
but we can pay attention to it. Uh, give it a little bit of love this week, see if it wants to move higher. Yeah, so that's going to be my main question here. How well are subs doing compared to Netflix? If you don't have a good earnings report, I imagine you go back down to the daily 200. But you've had this nice little move here. You see how the daily 200 has held up really, really well. If you have bad earnings, you're probably going to retest this. And then if it retests it and breaks, uh, look out below. 82. 100 magnet possibility. I can show you the world. <laughs> Palantir. Palantir? No. No, stop it. Stop it. Intel. Ugh, Intel. What looks better, Intel or AMD? AMD. Intel is a great company. They release great products. Terrible stock. Terrible stocks. They haven't moved in five years. Same price. Take a look at where you're at now and look left. It's the same damn price. And it pays a shitty dividend, 12 cents. You can find stocks out there. Cigarettes have better dividends than, than Intel. I can think of way better things to do than put my money with Intel. It's just a terrible stock. Great company. I love it. I love their products. It's not always wise to invest in something that you love. It's just terrible. If you lose uh, 41 here, down you go, 37. Signals, you got some uh, negative thrust. RSI is bearish. Uh, you got some squeezes on the 20 minute, 15 minute, two hour, one hour. Let me check out the one hour. Yeah, starting to enter a new squeeze here on the one hour. Yeah, I'm looking to short this if it's breaking below that 41 mark. They had disappointing earnings too until we'll watch that one too. Man, we got a lot of names. Um, <laughs> we're gonna have to sort through the the stuff here. Uh, Qcom, Qualcomm. Ah, uh, Qualcomm's okay. Uh, they got earnings out of the way. I didn't really look at their earnings report. I'll have to do that. But you're holding on to the daily 50. If you lose the daily 50, that's when it, things can get ugly. Nothing really good happens below the daily 50. So if you start to lose that, look out below. If you hold the daily 50 as support, you can possibly try to go that long. But you don't have... You're starting to get into a new squeeze. It's not quite going yet. Uh, trend is fine. Uh, RSI, you did have a negative RSI divergence and it is below the 50 line. So there's that. Uh, so if I'm looking at semiconductor names, I'm looking at AMD. I'm probably looking at NVIDIA. Uh, Broadcom looks a lot better. Um, let's see, how's TSM looking? TSM's looking better on, nah, probably not on, no, on looks, on looks off. Um, uh -huh. Got jokes. Yeah, I don't like. I don't. Qualcomm's better than Intel. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I like Qualcomm a little bit better than Intel. I mean, hell, even IBM looks better. IBM's a beast compared to those. Uh, Palantir. Yeah. The turd. <laughs> uh. They're a government proxy. Too many eyes on it. Too many players. Quit playing games with my love. If you break down below the daily 200, that is bearish. Um, let's clear out the drawing set. It's the turd for a reason. Let's see. You're in a box here. Break above, what is that, 1850? 1850, that's a positive note. And then if you break below 1560, daily 200, look out below. Now, it did have the nice little base down here at about the $6 mark. And since then, you had that move to 20. Everybody got excited. And then it just kind of stopped. So now we're just kind of waiting on earnings. So it's 18 to 21. 
If you get above 21, that sets you for 25 and 30. Either do shares or leaps on it because shorter term on contracts on this thing is annoying. If anything, do the wheel on it and see the guys in wheel chat. They'll set you on the, they'll help you out with that. Yeah, I'm definitely not. I, it's on my uh, do not trade list for me. Square, or is it called block? I think everybody just kind of doesn't really care. It's sideways. It is as much as you want to look at. It. I mean, look, that's uh, that's as sideways as sideways can be uh, for almost two years. Two years now. She's gone in between 90 bucks and 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Earnings coming up. We'll have to wait to see what earnings, what that earnings do. Um, SoFi, we talked about earlier. It had earnings. Hooray, they made profits and oh no sell off no one no one really cares about sofi plug plug power uh what what they had news on the other day they had something going on you had that pop and then you're you're just kind of chilling it's kind of out of my element here it's a penny stock um it's in a downtrend overall downtrend if anything you're gonna have these pops and then you're just going to sell off here Yay, news. Oh, sell off. Power plant check. Yeah. Chart is top left to bottom right. You don't have a new swing high. You hit resistance here at about the $5 mark. Clear five. Sure, that opens up the door for seven. But even still, I think if you come all the way up to, to here, you're probably going to wiggle back down over time. Daily 200 is pretty brutal on this name. Mara. Well, if we're going to check out Mara, you might as well look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin hanging about hanging above 40K. Uh, and then if you break out of this little pennant here, so break above 44,000, that looks bullish. So now you know that. Break above 44,000, great. If you lose 42, you're going back to 40. And then if you lose 40, that looks bad. So now then you can look at crypto names like Coinbase and Mara and Riot. Uh, Coinbase is not doing anything. Mara, a lot of these guys got hit. Uh, Mara. So if Bitcoin moves, you want to see Mara break above 1973. 1973 gives you to 22. Uh, 22 might give you to 29. Uh, that's if Bitcoin really starts to ramp up. And then if you lose, um, let's clear this level. It's kind of the same level here, though, 17. So that's a nice little two-point box here. So that's perfect. 22. If you lose 16, you're coming down here to the daily 200 on Mara. Could be a good little trade there. Uh, Ford has earnings. Bill Ford tough. Uh, you're right here at the daily 200. And we saw that GM had good earnings, so I'm wondering if Ford has good earnings as well. Uh, I would like to see a repeat here, uh, a follow-through. GM had good earnings. Maybe Ford has good earnings. EV market has been bleh. Uh, so the combustible engine looks great, and maybe the hybrid is the sweet spot for the market. Uh, and that's going to be great for names like Ford and General Motors. So... If Ford comes out with some good earnings, yeah, you could very well see a, a, a good move here, just like we saw in General Motors. So I like Ford above the daily 200. Um, yeah, uh, I have my personal thoughts here on Ford, but I'm not going to share them. Um, I've, I've owned Fords. Well, I don't own one right now. I own a Chevy now, but I've, I've switched teams. But uh I, always, I, I never had an issue with with a Ford vehicle, to be honest with you. I, I had I drove a Ford Danger Ranger, and then I got a Ford F one fifty. Then I got married and, and owned animals, so I I needed a, an SUV to transport. Um, I should probably buy a new truck. I need to talk to my wife. Hmm. I need to buy a new truck because we want we want bigger animals, and a truck would come in handy. So. <laughs> Can't have animals if I don't have a big truck to transport them in, right? Right, guys, help me out here. 
Um, so Ford earnings, we'll see what happens. Maybe it has a follow through move. Uh, I'm not going to really do anything there with Ford. Baba, China. All right, China. Ugh. Look, China has issues. I'm not touching Baba. You got the Hang Seng, which is top left, bottom right. They keep pumping the market. They keep trying to stir up investors, and it's just not enough. It's not enough. China has some very, very serious problems. And unfortunately, all these uh, China names are going to continue to have problems. Baba's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, yeah. Baba is just part of that. I, I can't long this by any means. Sure, you're going to get pops when you get these news like that for like the Hong Kong yeah, we, we pump the market. We're gonna put. We're trying to take money from the offshore accounts and bring them into the to the onshore market. And hooray, everything's gonna be good again. But it's never enough, and and we don't know what's going to be enough or when the market is going to be happy with where things are going. But China has some serious issues right now, and and you're gonna get those pops, and then you're gonna just fade back down. I, I don't I don't trust it. I don't trust it one bit. What do I think about cyber trucks? I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> uh, let me catch up on the other chart. Disney. Yeah, don't. Yeah, definitely take a look. If you're looking to do the wheel, if you want to learn about the wheel, definitely go check out the wheel chat. Those guys are awesome. American Express, ah oh, yes, the credit card for the rich folk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a purchasing card. It's not a credit card. <laughs> All time high breakout. I mean, this looks juicy. It ain't my fault that I'm out here getting loose. That's what American Express is saying. Yeah, big breakout here on the weekly chart. Ooh wee, AXP. Let's do this. Boing, boing. Ooh, 236. That's your overall target. That would be, actually, that'd be T1. That looks good. That looks clean. Good earnings report. You're breaking out here. Yeah, that looks great. 206. Start going for your numbers here. 210, 215, and so on. Definitely extended. So I would like to see a pullback to 200 and retest maybe and then go up there that way you have a full tank of gas but this trend looks pretty darn awesome i would still have stops i would place my stops below 200 just because you don't want to get put back in the box and get back into the chop zone uh hourly squeeze fired long so that looks good yeah so as long as just raise your stops here raise your stops make sure you don't get uh put back in you still have your 66 Mustang? Dang. Picks. Picks, man. Rivian. Ugh. <laughs> Buzz's girlfriend. Woof. <laughs> uh, I'm getting delusional here. Uh, let's see. 1625 resistance. 1475 support. I don't know what all that is. Let me redraw that. There you go. Eh, yeah, 15, 15 to 16. So that's a point move here. You're still below the daily 200. I want to point that out. Bull bear, e think of the 200 as the bull bear equator. EQ. If you're above it, you're bullish. If you're below it, you're bearish. This is a simple way to think of things. Uh, keep it simple. Um, trend is bearish, but you're trying to base out here. Yeah, you're just kind of sideways, and this thing hit a high of 179. That's amazing. It. This was the Tesla killer. Oh, not the Tesla killer. <laughs> Every EV market out there. It's the Tesla killer. Nope. Uh, yeah. Once you get above 1630, look to 17. Then you got a little bit of gap here. And then you have the daily 200. You're going to have plenty of overhead resistance as you progress higher. Uh, but that would be a good start. And then if you lose 15, 
you're into new lows. La, da, 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 da. Um, all right. So let's end it here because it's over an hour. Remember, pay attention to those uh the broader market of things as we progress forward we are overextended but just because we are overextended doesn't really mean that we just pull back we need to see some signals here there are a few signals there the dollar inverse head and shoulders but it's not confirmed uh rates had a nice little move on friday I want to pay attention to that uh bonds are at an interesting spot so there's there's lots of like sneaky things in my opinion that are happening but nothing actionable. So day trades are going to be your best friend. If you do swing, smaller size. Smaller size, protect your account. If you do take a move and it moves in your direction, raise your stops and take quick hits. Don't, don't try to swing for the fences at these levels. Do what you need to do to uh, play defense and protect the green, all right? Let things open up. It's a new week. We're fresh into a new month. So if you want to, take a look at those monthly charts, see where things are at. Great questions. Thank you for the ticker requests. I mean, we got plenty of stuff to look at this week. I mean, that's for damn sure. I appreciate y'all so much. Uh, thank you. I know there's a lot of things you could be doing tonight, but you took the time to come in and hang out with me rabble and and look at things so i definitely appreciate y'all uh very much and i hope y'all have a have a wonderful evening tonight and let's have a let's have a good week and i look forward to being with y'all in the morning all right thanks, Roger. thanks for your time thank you take care guys night <laughs>